Uh, if you're visiting with us today, we want to thank you for being here, amen? Because you didn't have to be here, but you're here. And uh, you know what? Uh, we just want you to be ministered to. Uh, God told, uh, Jesus told uh, Peter to feed his lambs, feed his sheep, and feed his sheep. And uh, that, goes for, that goes for every pastor uh, and in every church, amen? And we're to feed the lambs, and that's the young ones, and feed the sheep, and feed the sheep. And uh, today, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 1. We're going to look at a few verses this morning as uh, we, we talk about as we talk about a godly mother. Amen. And I uh, want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today because you don't have a lot to encourage you anymore. And I can tell you if, if old evil can destroy the family, he's happy. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Did you have you figured out yet he don't like you? I tell you, he don't like the family. And I, if you look with me today in Exodus chapter 1, and in verse 1, now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Ezekiah, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls, all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob, that's all of Israel, were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. Now verse 6, now J Joseph is dead, and all his brethren, and all the generations. So he, him and all his generation, uh, they're gone, new generation are in, and uh, now, now they got a new king. In verse, in verse 9, or verse 8, or excuse me, verse 7, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, and multiplied, multiplied and waxed exceedingly mightily in the land uh, that land was filled with them. They, 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 were, they, were, in, they, they were in bondage, amen? And uh, they were slaves to, in, uh, of that fact. And uh, all this is, gonna, is, is right now is taking place. And he says in verse 8, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt that, that knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal with them wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmakers and afflicted them with their burdens. And they built Pharaoh treasure cities and, 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 and uh, Pinnam and Ramesses and they, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Just want you to see that right there. And, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and all manner of service in the field. And all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. Notice that, the Hebrew midwives. Uh, of which the name of one of them was Shephra, and the other one was Pua. And he said, and he said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they saved the men children alive. And in verse 18, And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this things and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and they are delivered uh, the, the midwives, in other words, they, they have uh, before delivered the midwives, they delivered before the midwives came unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. And it came to pass, because of the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast him into the river, and every daughter... You shall save a life. I want to invite you to pray with me today. Lord, we come to you because, Lord, we need you. Lord, we acknowledge that in, in, uh, in John chapter 15 and verse 5, 
You said if we abide in you and that you'll abide in us and without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we acknowledge that today. There's nothing we can do in our own strength. Lord, everything, it's, everything that we do uh, for you, Lord, that you're in control of. And I pray today that for someone here that don't know you as Savior, Lord, would you draw them to yourself today where they can be saved. But today, I want you to bless our mothers here today and those that are going to be mothers. And Lord, help us to open up our minds and our hearts today to your way. And Lord, to, do, to, 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 grow, to grow the family your way. And Lord, to honor you in our lives. And I pray for our children next door. Thank you for so many people that work in our children's ministry. Lord, how wonderful they are. And that, Lord, we're just so blessed to have so many uh, diligent workers in, in this building. But Lord, raise up those children, not just to know who you are, but to know you and to have a relationship with you. And at the end of the day, they'll be able to carry out their faith into the highways and byways of life and make a change in this world unlike we have before. Lord, I pray that you'll sit down with us today, that you'll guide my tongue and you'll guide my mind and you'll guide my heart today by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you told Paul when he was weak, uh, that when he was weak, then he would be strong. And Lord, I ask you to lay your hand upon me today because I'm weak. I'm just a, I'm a simple man with a, with a heavy call. And I pray today that your will will be done in this service. And Lord, we lift this all up into your hands today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And I want to encourage you today because we have so many godly women and, and so many godly servants here on the side of this old cattle hill. You know, we call this old church right here, it's God's church, but it's, we call it being on the side of the old cattle hill because we've got the largest cattle uh, cattle a company in the, in, the, in, the, in the nation right here behind us, and they're all the way around us. Amen? And I can tell you, God has done a miracle right here on the side of this hill. Let's just be honest about it. You had to drive here. You didn't go by. Amen? I mean, you had to make an effort to get here today. And I can tell you, you made that effort because you want to hear the Word of God. You want to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as long as we keep him first, everything else will be all right. And I can tell you, if you keep him first in the, in the church, everything's going to flow right. If you keep him first in your home, everything's going to flow right. And I want you to understand that today. And we can make a stand against an ungodly world, and we can look at that today as we look into the Word of God, that we'll see that we can make that stand, and we can live godly in Jesus Christ because he ordained us to do this. I thought, you know, it seems like in the day and age in which we live that, that Jesus has told us to, God's told us to be holy because he is holy. But in the day and age in which we live, we lord the standard of holiness, even in, in, not just on the outside of the world, but inside of our churches today. We can't lower the standard. We need to raise the standard and live godly in Jesus Christ where people could have a, where they could have the right example to follow along the way. And I'm not talking about being legalistic. I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm talking about living godly for Jesus Christ. Amen. Letting him be Lord of your life. Letting him guide you through life. Having a relationship with him that's unmovable and unshakable. And that's what God wants. If anybody's with me this morning, say amen. amen. I got five simple points this morning, but they're great and they're, they're powerful. If you look, if you really take in the word of God into your heart. Number one. Number one, when you look into our text today, we're going to go back uh, into our text this morning. We're going to pick up at, at verse 5. But I want you to uh, realize my first point this morning. Even and Joseph was God's man, amen? And I, and I, I can tell you, he was, uh, he, he was uh, of Potiphar's house, and he run that well. And even though he was a Hebrew, he, he run that well, and God's hand was upon him. And, and he, he, took care of, he took care of the whole nation of Israel. He took care of the house of God. He took care of, of the 12 tribes that came in uh, that, that were his brothers that sold him into slavery because of their jealousy for him. And now he's in power because God put him there, amen? God's hand was up on his life and there was something different about Joseph. And, then, and people knew it. Potiphar spotted it first thing. He knew that the, 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 God, uh, uh, the God of Joseph was the God that can get things done. And he realized that and he put, 
He put Joseph in, in charge and Joseph was in charge and out of that, when the drought came and he was able to, to save his family, the, the twi- all, all of his family and therefore the 12 tribes of Israel were salvaged during that time and saved during that time while they were in Egypt but time went on and their work got rigorous because they had a new administration and the new administration did not know God's man Joseph, neither did they, did they know uh, the, the man uh, uh, Joseph God, God Jehovah. So look down with me in verse seven and verse uh, five this morning. And the souls of that came out of the loins of Jacob, that's Israel, were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already. Now you, you move on down to verse six. And Joseph died and all of his brethren and all of that generation. And it, so here in verse seven, and the children of Israel were fruitful and they increased abundantly and they multiplied and they waxed exceedingly mightily and the land was filled with them. And in verse eight, now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Therefore, when you look at that this morning, he did not know Joseph, so he did not know Joseph's God, God Jehovah, amen? But look down with me in verse nine. And he said to his people, the Egyptian pe- people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Now they kept them in bondage, they kept them in slavery, and, and they, they, they were there, but they outgrew the Egyptian people. And I can tell you, God's hand, even though they were slaves at that time, God's hand was on the Israelite people because they're God's chosen people. And it says, it says in, in verse 10, he says, come on now, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and come to pass that, that, uh, that when they falleth out in any war, they join also the enemies and fight against us, and so get them out of the land. And I want you to notice that this morning. And if you see that, you see that you see a godless king that uh, had control of the Israelite, Israelites. And he, and he tells them to come on now and let us deal wisely with them. And I want you to see that Joseph, God's man, he's gone. There's an ungodly king in and things are going to change. But I can tell you, God is still in control. And we can trust him because he's sovereign. Number two this morning, life was made hard because of the Israel, because of Israel. And I want you to see today that the God of Jehovah, he watched over Israel during this time. And it says in verse, verse 11, therefore they did set over them taskmakers and they afflicted them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities uh, of, of Pinnam and Ramesses. Now I want you to see that this morning and you, and you read on down to verse 14, which I'm going to, I want you to see that their work was, was vigorous and their work was hard and they made brick and they stood in the mud and they, and they, as they made brick and as they packed brick, everything that came their way was hard. Everybody say hard. hard. And you can see in our text this morning in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. God was building an army. Somebody say amen. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And in verse 13, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Now I want you to notice that word. You ha- may have a different translation. But I, I looked up the word and, and the word means strictness or hardness. And it's, it means extreme hardship. And they served with hardship. And in verse 14, and they made their lives bitter and hard bondage in mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field and all the service wherein they made them serve, it was with rigor. Now I want you to see that this morning because it was made hard upon there. And I can tell you, Israel was God's chosen people and Jehovah God was their God. Everybody say amen to that. We are a people today and Jesus Christ is our God. Amen? And we're no different than anybody else. They served, they served persecution because they were of the children of Israel. They, 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 they served persecution in that day towards them because they were God's people. And that same thing today in 2 Timothy 3.12, it says this, Yea, all that will live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. Let me just go ahead and tell you this today. Evil hates light. 
because their, e, their, their deeds are evil. And you can find that in John chapter 3 and verse 19. And I can tell you, they persecu persecution came to Israel because of God Jehovah. And I can tell you, persecution comes to us today because of Jesus Christ. Amen? And we're no different. We've got to learn to live in the land. We've got to learn to live in the land and stand up to a king that's godless. We got to stand up for what the ways of God is. And we got to stand up and put on the breastplate of righteousness and, and do what God says that we ought to do. And we ought to shut up our, our, our feet with the preparation of gospel of peace and take out the gospel into the highways and byways of life because that church is the only thing that's going to change people. That church is the only thing that's going to bring people together is the gospel of Jesus Christ and it alone. You can't have enough programs established in a church to ever overcome what the gospel can do. Anybody home this morning say amen. amen. Number three this morning. Praise God for godly mothers. Amen. Let me show you what they look like. Look down with me in verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew wives. Now notice he speak to the Hebrew wives. That was the ones that was in captive. The Hebrews, the Israelites, the Hebrews. Anybody home say amen. Now, some of you don't understand all that, but they, they were in bondage this time, but it, 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 they're getting ready to be freed. But I, I can tell you, it said, the king of Egypt speak to the Hebrew wives of which the name of, of one of them was Shephra and the other was, was Pua. And I want you to see those two godly women right here. I want you to see their character of who they was. And look on down with me in verse 16. And he said, when you do the office of the midwife, to, del to deliver the children, the office of midwife, to the Hebrew women. And you see them upon their stools getting ready to deliver. It's what he means. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if, you, if it be a daughter, then, he shall, then she shall live. I want you to notice that this morning because that ought to raise the hairs up on the back of your head. See, I can tell you, evil has always wanted to kill our children. And they still do today. But look down with me in verse 17. But the midwives, look at here. They feared God. Amen. Boy, well, we need some God-fearing people in the day and age in which we live. Would you say amen to that, that today? Amen. But the midwives feared God and did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. Now, I want you to think about that. Here's two midwives that were going to be delivering the children of Israel. They, uh, whenever they were going to give birth, he told them to kill the men, kill, kill the male child, and let the female live. That's what he told them. But what did they do? They feared God more than they feared the king. And I can tell you that king could have took their life at any time. But they made a stand before, before the king, and they served their living God. Somebody say amen to that. We can do that today, church. You don't have to be talked down to. You don't have to be talked over. They can yell loud, but you can stand there with faith under the mighty hand of God and with a backbone, you can do what's right. Somebody say amen to that. And I can tell you today, that's where we need to be in the day and age in which we live. I'm, I've, I've got off my notes again. I'm in trouble. Somebody say trouble. But I can tell you they thank God for godly mothers and they, they made a stand. And, and, but the mid, midwives, they, they didn't do what they were commanded to do. And then when you look down in verses 18 and 19, and the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, Why have you not done this thing and, and have, have saved the men, children alive? Listen, he could have killed those midwives. I'm telling you, he could have destroyed them. And he calls them in. Don't you know they were scared? Don't you know they had fear in them? But what did their fear, how did they overcome their fear? Because they feared God more. Amen. I'm not talking about being afraid of him. I'm talking about being in reverence of him and all of who he is. They knew who God was and they knew what he could do. And in verse 19, and the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew, Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively, they were strong. You know, God made his people strong, amen? And, and, they, and when they delivered, they delivered, they delivered before the midwives come into them. And they answered that question in, in, verse, uh, in verse 19, they answered that question because God made them strong. And then I want you to notice in verse 20, 
And, and it says, therefore God dealt well with the midwives and, and the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. What happened? God blessed the midwives for doing the right thing. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something, church. Sometimes we're in a dark situation. Sometimes we gotta make a stand that's uncomfortable. And sometimes we gotta make a stand that darkness is all around. And sometimes we gotta make a stand when fear comes in. But guess who's always there? God's always there. And I can tell you, he blessed them for their stand. Look down with me in verse 21. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses, he made them families. He blessed them with families. God loves the family. And I can tell you, in a day and age in which we live, they want to do away with the family. But he blessed their, their family, he blessed their home, and God honors obedience. He, uh, he honors obedience. And I can tell you, when you're in disobedience, you're in conflict. And when you're obedient, I, I can tell you, God will bless that. Anybody home this morning say amen. amen. Look at verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, every son that is born, you shall cast him in the river. Every daughter you shall save alive. I want you to see, evil has always, always wanted to kill babies. Since the, begin, since, since the beginning of time, here it is, Exodus chapter one, evil is wanting to kill babies. Today they call it a choice. Today they call it my body, my rights. God calls it killing a baby. And he says, he tells in verse 22 that, that he, he's still gonna cast them into the river. Listen, we have no regard for life anymore. First thing you do when kids get about seven years old, you put this thing in their hand, then they play games where they kill one another. Anybody home? Then they say it. They say you vote for for people that that honor that honor abortion and all the things that goes against God's word. They say you do that. So why should they honor life? Because you're the example. But thank God for godly women and godly men that make a stand along the way. I know it gets uncomfortable, but you're going to be okay this morning. Because God wants, God wants to honor the home and God, God and listen, God will sit out in the home. The home should look like the house of God, amen? Over in, Ma in Matthew chapter two, I just want to show you this this morning because evil has always hated babies. In Matthew chapter two, after Jesus was born and, and, and Herod, he was jealous about that. So he was going to do away with, he's gonna, he was going to kill all the babies under two years old. And in verse 16, it said in Matthew chapter two, and Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise man was exceedingly wroth and he sent forth and slew all the children that was in Bethlehem in the coast thereof for two years old and under according to the time which has diligently inquired of the wise men. And this was fulfilled which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying in Ramah was there a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and they would not because they were no more. I'm gonna tell you something. Evil has always killed babies. Evil has always wanted to destroy the home. Evil cares nothing. They have, they have no heart for, for, for the things of God. Number four this morning, God always makes a way for mothers. I tell you, I know my mother, I tell you, I, I don't know how she did the things she did, but she did them. We got godly mothers here that take care of the children. They take care of the household. But I want you to see a couple things this morning. And, and when you look in chapter two, I want you to look in verse one. And there went, a, there, went, there went a man of the house of Levi. That's where the priest came out of. And took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the, women, and, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And, and she saw him that he was a goodly child. And she hid him three months. So here's a, here's a man child. She hides for three months one of the Hebrew children. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took for, for she, she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, that, that's cattails, and dabbed it with slime and with pitch. She put good tar around it. Everybody say amen. amen. 
and put the child therein and, and laid it in the flags. The, the flags were, were the cattails by the riverbank. So here, here's a woman that, that knows that her child is going to be destroyed because he's a man child and, and he's going to be thrown in the river. So she puts a safe place for him and God gives her a plan. And his sister stood and, and his sister stood afar off and to wit what would be done to him. So they were watching. Y'all with me this morning say amen. amen. But I want you to see in those first two verses, you see the love and the protection of a mother. Then when you see, when you when you start in verse three, and I'm gonna read verses five and six, I want you to see that God's already worked things out for this mother. You moms, you just do what God tells you to, he'll work everything else out. And the daughter of the Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Hey, Pharaoh was the one that wanted to kill the babies. Now his daughter's coming down to, 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 to take a bath. And her maidens walked along by, by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, the cattails, she sent her maid to fetch it. She goes, go over and see what that is. And she brings it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. Now watch this. And behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him. See how God already worked that out? You think she, hey, listen, he knew exactly who was going to be there that day. God knew exactly the one to send down there. Hasn't God got a sense of humor? Here's Herod that wants to kill the babies. Now, he, God's got his daughter full of compassion for this Hebrew child. And when she sees it, she has compassion on it. And, and, and she, she said, it, this is one of the Hebrew children. Now, when you look at that this morning, look at verse 7. Then said the sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? She thought, what a great idea. Yeah, you go do that. Now, let me show you the sovereignty of God. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went. And called the child's mother. Amen. Where did God lead her to? The, God, the child's mother. God's hand was in that. Because this wonderful mother did not yield to Herod's call to kill that baby and throw him in the river. She wanted to save her baby. And God had a plan. Now watch this. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you the wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Not only did she get her child back, but she got paid for doing it. <laughs> only God could do that. Amen. God's good at math. Amen? Amen? You see the sovereignty of God? Just because of, of a godly woman? If y'all are with me this morning, say amen. amen. Don't you know it took, don't you know she had to be courageous? Even, that, even Herod's daughter, she had to be courageous in what she did. Then when you, when you look down through here and, and you see in verse 9, And Pharaoh's daughter said in her, Take the child away and nurse it for me. I will give you the wages. The woman took the child and nursed it. Verse 10, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. You know, I want you to know that mothers rock the cradle that rocks the world. And this world is fixing to be rocked because of this one act of obedience of this godly woman that softened the heart of the enemy. And now she's raising her own child because of the sovereignty of God. And I want you to see this morning, I want you to see, I want you to know this this morning. I want you to see the forget God's forgiveness. And I want you to know for mothers that maybe you don't feel like you need to be forgiven, I want you to know that God's, God's forgiveness comes with a great love and great personal love. 
If you look, go, go back with me in verses in, in chapter 1 and look at verse 16. If y'all are with me this morning, say amen. amen. It says this in verse 16. He said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. If it be a daughter, then you shall live. And the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men child alive. And the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and, and have saved the men, children alive? You know, I want to say again that evil hates children. Evil hates godly people. Evil hates godly homes. And when you look at verse 22, And Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast him into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Evil destroys, but God brings life. I want you to turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 8. I want to show you some promises this morning. Now because of these godly midwives, the godly Hebrew women that did not conform to this godless king, because of them, God is raising up Moses to lead the children of Israel out of, out of slavery and out, out of bondage. But in 1 Kings, I want to show you something. I was talking to Brother Ronnie the other night at the National Day of Prayer, and he come up and started telling me about this verse, and I'm thinking, I, I can't remember where that's at. I don't, he was saying somewhere in 1 Kings, well, he texted it to me. And I read it, and I thought, well, how about that? That goes along with my sermon. You know, he, he, he's, what is Brother Ronnie, probably six years older than me. He's probably 71. He's still in the Word of God, still studying the Word of God and sees something different all the time. That's the way the Word of God is. It's alive and it'll, it'll, it'll come alive every time you read it. Don't matter how old you're going to get, you're going to see something different in it all the time you, because the Word of God's alive. But I want you to see something this morning. I want to talk to you for just a minute. Can we be honest? You know, probably some of your hearts are broken this morning because maybe you made a bad decision when you was young. The world gets loud, don't it? The world gets loud and they tell you to get rid of your problems. Just go, just, hey, don't want to have problems. My mom and dad don't want to have problems. I'm just going to have an abortion. And you do those things, but you know, the, all those loud voices and all those friends that encourage you to do so, I can tell you, they're not there with you for the rest of your life. Matter of fact, they'll never comfort you. They'll never know that the shame that you have to bear. They never know the, the downheartedness that you, that you have to bear. They never, you, you know, when you're in that kind of state, the first thing women think is, I can't ever be forgiven of this, but I got some good news for you. God will forgive that. Amen. And he wants to forgive that. Amen. And his promises are he will forgive that. Amen. And I want you to know we serve a God that's big. Amen. All those friends that you had once before, they'll give you the wrong information. But I can tell you, you're in company of people today that will love you right. no matter what you've done. Every one of us, including me, has come out of something that we're ashamed of. Some of the things I did when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I'm ashamed of. Makes me sick. And I'm not that person anymore. A lot of those things we do, we do it before we're even saved. But I want to tell you something this morning. God's got a load of forgiveness. He's got promises that tells us he'll forgive. It says over in, 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 uh, in, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46, if they, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. Let's let that digest for just a minute. Do you know everybody in here is a sinner? You know what we do as Baptist people? We categorize sin. This one's worse than this one, this one. Listen, we have all sinned, and sin goes against God. Any sin. 
Amen? Amen. Well, I want to talk to you this morning that's burdened down and you're burdened heavy. I want you to know there's a way out. And his name is Jesus this morning. Now, I want you to see, he says, and thou, he says, if, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them into the enemy so that they carry them away, captive into the land of the enemies far or near, yet they shall bethink, that means come to themselves, they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent. There you go. All God's looking for is a confession and a repent. And make supplication unto them the land that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We've done wrong. We have committed wickedness. So return unto thee with all thy heart and with their, all their soul in the land of their enemies. And they led them away cat, captive and praying to them, thee towards the land which thou gavest unto thy fathers, the city of Jerusalem. And thou hast chosen the house which I have built of my name. What does all that mean? He says, the main thing is, he just said, confess it and repent. I want to show you something. In verse 56, here it is. Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. It says this. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his People Israel, according to all that he promised, all that he promised, he promises if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You understand his promises? It says in John chapter 6, I believe it's verse 36, but I'm not for sure. It says, if a man seeks me, I'll know why I cast him out. And he says, he, he talks about blessed is the Lord that giveth rest to his people according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise. Amen. Now what are you going to do with that? What God says he will do. That's right. Amen. I don't know where you're at in life, but you don't have to carry that. We've all made bad decisions in life. The world wants you to carry it and be miserable. God wants you to give it to him. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. We've got godly women all over this congregation, but they, they haven't always been godly. We've got godly men all over this congregation, but they ain't always been godly. Church, it ain't how you start. It's how you finish. Amen. 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 Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. And there's a ministry here that ministers to those people that's been in those tough places, and it's very private. And there's a link that you can get to. We'll talk about that some other time, but I want you to know God cares about what you've been through. And he'll carry that burden for you. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, there's people all over this building this morning, Lord, that just need you.